You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor. Subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments below. Be sure to smash that like button. One very welcome change of the Brian Kelly era is that we're getting access to not only practice, but to assistant coaches as well, something that just hasn't been the norm here. And to be clear, that's kind of sort of the rule everywhere. I mean, it's it's rare that you get unfettered access to the entire coaching staff. And, and this hasn't been a complete uh, open-door policy, but we have gotten more access, which is, is very nice to be able to talk to, to quarterbacks and young players and all of the coaches to learn more about what's happening here through this transition, which is very important. And after practice Tuesday evening, offensive coordinator Mike Denbrock met with the media. And let me just not bury the lead and start with what everybody wants to know as he talked about quarterbacks. He was asked the question sort of about the possibility of a two-quarterback system. And at the end of the answer, he kind of told everybody what they wanted to know, which is when they're going to make a decision on a starting quarterback. I, I think it's important that those guys understand that this competition is probably going to spill over into the fall, as we all kind of suspect it probably will. And they're all going to be given opportunity to win the job, and it's important for them to step up and seize that opportunity. So it'll spill over into the fall. I think we probably all expected that. I don't think many of us anticipated them naming a starter coming out of spring, something that I was certainly curious if it would happen. And I guess it, it still could, is if – as the team makes its way through spring, if someone very clearly emerges, does someone else maybe transfer? I do want that. Look, let's just let's just let's cut through it all. Let's talk about the issues that everybody's concerned about, which is would somebody else leave? Would that leave you thin at quarterback again? I'll remind you about 2018. Joe Burrow transferred in in May, showed up in June, right? He he goes through summer workouts, and then you're going into fall camp. And when it appeared as though Burrow was starting to separate, McMillan and Narcisse in August transferred. So it's not altogether unprecedented to think that somebody might leave in August. Could happen. I'm not saying it will, but could. And if you're Mike Denbrock and Brian Kelly and you're trying to make sure that these guys stick around for as long as possible and go through this competition, they're on the roster in the fall, yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't serve you to name a starting quarterback coming out of spring. They're past the halfway point of spring drills. Let's see how it all shapes out. I'm not going to put too much stock into the spring game. Uh, there was a spring game in the not-too-distant LSU football past when Chris Garrett looked like an absolute all-star. I remember Steven Rivers looked like the best quarterback on the roster in a spring game. And neither of those guys ever played meaningful football here. So, again, I'm not going to overstate the importance of a spring game or anything like that or one spring practice. But when the offensive coordinator is telling you, yeah, we're not naming a, a starter this spring, it kind of gives you an idea of what they're thinking and how much more they have to go. Now, Mike Denbrock did sort of give a little bit more of an elaborative answer on the quarterbacks and how they're doing so far. I've been pleased with all the quarterbacks, quite frankly. Uh, as you guys know, in our system, the way we run it, uh, we put a lot on the quarterback now. And uh, so his, his ability to learn and pick up things – is very, very critical to us advancing this offense. And, you know, I know Coach Kelly's probably used this term before with you, and I'll use it. I mean, they, they are kind of drinking through a fire hose right now. I mean, we've, we've thrown a ton of installation at them, demanded uh, that they get things right, and uh, I know they're swimming a little bit. So not just them, but the entire offense. But uh, I think their willingness to learn, their willingness to dig in, they've been competitive in the meeting room as well as on the practice field. And that's going to that's gonna produce the results that we're all looking for. We've heard from Mike Denbrock now, some interview sessions, some just sort of candid video of him at practice. And, and he has the kind of um, cooler, old dad vibe. A and I continue to like what I hear from him because it's just a contrast to what a lot of these guys have seen. It, it Well, to be clear, it more closely resembles Steve Ensminger. And I like that. I like the sort of, paternal figure that's um that's that's veteran and savvy and knows offense and has is, is been through the battles and is kind of going to be unflappable and unfazed I like that I think that's a calming presence for quarterbacks I'm not saying it's the only way to do it I mean you look in the NFL and you see young hotshot quarterback coaches that are I mean Sean McVay and I mean, you see these guys who do great things in their 30s and it's I'm not saying that 
it matters one way or another, or there are absolutes one way or another. I just kind of like this, just as a, as a personal matter of opinion. Now, uh, Den Brock was also asked about the end. You heard him say there, like, these guys are drinking through a fire hose uh, because they dumped a lot on them on the install. And he talked a little bit about, about how it, they kind of had to pull back a little bit. If I put a percentage on it, I'd say we're maybe 30% installed. I put a moratorium on installation, uh, which I have since broken uh, two or three times uh, just because of situational football that we're running. But a week ago today, we made altogether way too many mistakes uh, as an offensive unit. So I put the brakes on installing new things and just have really talked to the players more about how hard they're playing, how hard they're competing, how hard they're given what they've got to give to the offensive unit and to their teammates in particular. So that's been a lot more of the rally cry than uh, throwing in a few more plays or, or some more fancy scheme stuff. Um, I, When you hear him say, we put a moratorium on install, and it's more about how hard are you playing, doesn't that sort of default to what we've talked about so much with Brian Kelly, where it's not really, when you hear him talk, it's not really about players or position groups. It's been more about perfect reps and running from drill to drill and effort and things like that. He's trying to rebuild a culture. And they were pushing forward with install, had a really bad day, and so they pulled back and said, all right, let's not do install. Let's just be perfect at what we're doing right now. Again, that's building good habits. And that's going to pay off in the long run. I mean, how long till you see that absolutely benefit on the field? I don't know. I don't know if it's week one or week 12 or next year. But, I mean, I can think back to 2018 as well, where as that season went along, by the time you got to the end of the season, it looked drastically different. Joe Burrow in 2018 did not throw a touchdown pass in the month of October. The month of October! By the end of 2018, brother, he was cruising. I could go back to 2012 and say the same thing about Zach Mettenberger. We were ready for that offense, and it just didn't really happen until, boom, November, Alabama game, light switch, and then Met was awesome. And in 2013, he was... He played like an All-American quarterback until he had the knee injury. So that's probably going to happen with this offense as well. They're going to find their, their like a baby giraffe. You know, they're going to wait till they find their stability. Once they do, they'll start to gallop. And I think that's going to happen with this offense. It's just going to be interesting to see when. Uh, one more on the quarterbacks because the other thing is about, and we've asked about this a bunch, and we've we've kind of wondered is are they going to pick a quarterback and then mold the offense to him or find a quarterback that fits the offense they want to run. And Denbrock gave a little bit of an insight there. That's a piece of it for sure. One thing that has always been important to Coach Kelly and I is the versatility of what we have as an offensive structure so that it could be kind of plug and play depending on who the quarterback happened to be or what our best personnel group happened to be. I mean, is that is it going to be four wide receivers? Is it going to be three tight ends? Is it going to be, you know, what what is it exactly going to look like? And I think all those evaluations are happening now, and I'll get a better feel for that. And then I think that also includes the quarterback position. So what fits the quarterback that ends up winning the job the best what's his skill set where, where is he most comfortable uh and then tailoring things to make sure that it's kind of in concert with one another at that position in particular but uh based on all of our offensive personnel too if you ask the question what comes first the chicken or the egg it kind of sounds like he's saying the egg comes before the chicken um that they'll pick their quarterback and then see what that quarterback likes and what he does best so uh, a little, you can start to see the morsels of where they're where they're picking and choosing and how they're making their way through it. But impressed with the four guys right now, four guys that are competing on the field and in the the meeting room, and guys that seem to be really engaged. So uh, we'll all get a look at them week from Saturday in the spring game. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact, and be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.